everybody. It's Monday, August 17th, and that means it's time for another episode of Chatting with Agnes and Cecilia. I'm one of your co-hosts, Cecilia Sepp. I am the founder and principal of Rogue Tulips Consulting. We offer consulting exclusively to 501c organizations, and we also offer association management services. And I'm here today with my co-host and friend, Agnes. So Agnes, would you like to say hello and introduce yourself? Thank you, Cecilia. Good morning and good afternoon and good evening to our global audience. My name is Agnes Amos Coleman. I'm an author and a consultant. Over to you, Cecilia. Great. Thank you, Agnes. And thanks to Agnes's Global Connections, we have one of our first global guests today from Canada. We are joined today by Catherine Valancourt, who's the National Director President of the Association of Administrative Professionals. Welcome, Catherine. Thank you very much, Cecilia and Agnes, for inviting me over to participate in today's call. Thank you so much for accepting, and it's going to be a great topic, everybody, because today we are talking about membership engagement during tough times. And as we know, the pandemic is still going on, and the after effects will go on even longer. So Catherine is here today to talk about how they have increased member engagement, increased membership, and actually added a branch to their branch network of nine branches. So Catherine, what was one of the big shifts that you did at your organization to address these tough times? Well, it actually started a couple of years ago, about three years ago, when we actually redid, um, we did a review of our organization, and we actually did a name change as well as uh, a full marketing rebrand um, of our organization. We did a brand revitalization project, so we changed our marketing colors, our logo, our tagline. Uh, we've also invested in technology by doing a digital transformation of our website, uh, which made it more interactive um, and more appealing to our potential uh, members. A big part of the, um, the different things that we as an association have actually participated in was really engage with our members and asking them what they wanted, and what, what they want to hear uh, from speakers, what they want to learn about. and. With um, the increased number of members, with, we actually ended up increasing our branches. So uh, when I first came on as president, we had about six local branches, and we are now up to eight plus our MAL liaison, so that's our ninth. Um, we have opened up our Ottawa branch, our Moncton branch, and our Red Deer branch, so we're across Canada, um, which is exciting. Uh, it's our programming is also really interesting because our programming is done at, at the local or branch levels. Uh, but this year, as part of with COVID, we needed to do some sort of an, an action to show our members that we also want to provide them with extra resources from a national level. So we are offering for the very first time a national uh, webinar series for the program year. So we've lined up 16 um, new um, speaker engagements for the next uh, nine months. Um, so about two a month, give or take. Um, it's really exciting. It's, uh, we actually have our first one this afternoon with uh, Lucy Brazier, who's the, uh, who's the um, manager and founder of Executive Secretary Magazine and Executive mm -hmm. Secretary Life. She's an international speaker, well-known all around the world. Um, so we actually have a great turnout of registration, uh, registrations for um, this event this afternoon, which is really exciting for us. Um, and part of the other aspect of the engagement was we actually, as a board, went through um, a strategic development session, a strategic, uh, we wanted to develop a plan for our association. We've never had that before. So the last year and a bit, uh, the board has gone through a no and wonder sessions. We actually had a facilitator come in. Uh, we've developed a strategy statement for our association, which is really exciting, um, and um, also created um, a strategic blueprint with three focus areas. So the first one was investing in technology, uh, which is key in today's world for sure, right? right. Um, the second one is transforming our value add. So that includes um, member retention and attraction, but also development for a board level, right? We want to start thinking in a strategic level for assistance. You know, we want to make sure you know people know that it's not just a job, it's a career. Um, and also moving away from the old style of just an assistant to the strategic business partner for an executive, right? 
And then our last part of our blueprint is enhancing our designation program, which I'm excited to announce that we're launching um, in September, uh, which is going to help people. We're adding an online component to our designation program, so which is great. And for those who are, for example, in the U.S. who have a PACE or uh, a CAP designation, they can also get now their CCAP designation uh, through our organization through an online contact form. So, My gosh, you guys have been super busy. <laughs> we have, but it's great. You know what? It's really exciting. Uh, our members are, are engaged. Uh, we've seen our numbers go up, which is amazing. Um, I think that right now our current membership numbers are higher than I've ever seen them before. So I've been on the board in different roles for about the last six years, and um, it's, it's really an exciting time to be part of an association. Um, we've also... Another big part is that we've we've started doing a lot more strategic relationships and partnerships with different organizations. Actually, since, I, since you're from the States, uh, we've actually uh, have a formal partnership now with IAAP, um, which is the International Association of Administrative Professionals. So we're working together in unison to provide um, shared resources for both our members. So we don't want them to think it's a competition to be one be between one organization to the other, but we want them to know that they can access the resources from both portals um, because of this joint venture. Well, so well, so that's a lot of information. That's fantastic. So you guys have rebranded, you created new strategy points, you yeah. uh, changed your taglines, you've expanded mm -hmm. reach for your certification. Whew, okay. <laughs> that, <laughs> I was like, I'm tired just listening to it. Uh, no, that's fantastic <laughs> though. So, um, let me ask you one more question and I want to see what Agnes's thoughts are on this topic because she's always so insightful. So Catherine, here in the States anyway, you know, the things response, our response to the pandemic kind of started, you know, early March of 2020. So when did you start launching all of these great changes and new services for your members? So for our new programming year, we just launched it two weeks ago. But once the pandemic hit, uh, the board basically started providing online opportunities. Started in April, so because um, we need to secure some some sponsors uh, to be able to do the webinars for free for us, um, and in return that we would promote their businesses, um, and then we offer those webinars. Now we are also a Google nonprofit partner, so we've been able to use the Google technology uh, to be able to provide the webinars. Uh, for our members for free, which is fantastic. Um, we've also been able to record the session, so for those who can't attend, uh, have been able to access it through our members only section of the website. Um, and then in terms of the other things, the strategy um, was actually approved at our AGM, uh, our virtual AGM, first time ever. We hosted it at the uh, end of May, so that was approved, which was great. It was a different way of people, it was actually really interesting because uh, you saw people who came to the virtual AGM that had never gone to an AGM before, which was great to see that, right? Because it was ac more accessible for them to go versus in an in-person. So we're looking at ways of us um, incorporating a virtual aspect to our AGM for next year. Wow, um, so, that's fantastic. Yeah. And, and I've heard other people say that too, Catherine, that it is expanding engagement and inclusion by going Absolutely. to conferences. So, mm -hmm. so Agnes, what, what are your thoughts? Or perhaps you have a question. I think my thought, it, it appears to me, Catherine, that you guys have anticipated and prepared for, you know, a disaster or a pandemic or even an unforeseen circumstances that a lot of association go through. And whether you guys knew you were doing that or not, it's, <laughs> you know, it's, it's paying off. And, and but one of the things that I would like you to share with our community is, if you were to mention three key things that you would attribute to your success, what would it be? Because uh, it's very interesting. A lot of what you're doing, we definitely can benchmark from this. What would you say those three things are? I think the very first thing is by investing in technology. Being able to invest in an association in technology is super, you know, it's important. But I also understand that a lot of associations, nonprofit groups, don't have the funding available mm -hmm. to them. Um, so by source, like we've been, we've actually looked at different grants and sponsor and um, bursaries that we were able to get through government funding. Um, like some of our funding that we got was for translation, for example, through the government. 
uh, because we provide part of our website in French um, as well as the rest of it in English, right? Um, that's really key. The second part is is really understanding what the members want. And one of the things that I had done when I became president a few years ago, three years ago actually, was I made a commitment to visit every branch um, mm. in, in our association and to talk to as many members as possibly can. So then we can actually understand and know what they're looking for, for, for them to, to keep them, right? Like at the end of the day, a member's not gonna see if they're not getting any, anything back. Right. So and the big part was, you know, they want more training, more hands on training. And, it, you know, it, it's one of those things that a conversation has always been, you know, soft skills versus hard skills. They're skills, you know, they're skills that are, you know, everyone can learn something new at every webinar that they go to. It doesn't it doesn't mean that they're going to learn everything new that in that webinar. But if you can take away one thing, I mean, that's a win right there. Right. And I guess the last thing is having a right team in the right position. You know, I always joke around with, with the board. We don't always have to agree, but we have the end goal in mind, and our end goal is the same. So um, by being able to have a team that you can work so well with, um, I don't think we would have accomplished all the things that we have without the great team that we have. Um, so it's, you know, it, it's part of that, like, leadership development, and it's part of engaging your board and, you know, We've never like the strategy plan in session was was so impactful for the board because you know you did it together you created that statement together and when you put all the ideas all of those like flip charts all over the walls and then you realize that you all want the same thing it's you know that mm -hmm. to me is is the drive right you just need to say the things that you really want as you know as an association as an organization because you've got representatives from all around Canada you know mm -hmm. I think. As a, uh, as a country in Canada, we're really lucky. Um, you know, our government has stepped up in terms of providing subsidy, pay, like subsidies, wage subsidies, and um, different different opportunities for our economy to survive uh, during this pandemic. So I, I think that's also we have to kind of recognize that a little bit uh, in terms of not losing all the members during this time, right? Um, by the by, by the government being able to provide these subsidy programs for companies to keep their employees, it's it, it, it's so helpful. Like I don't know if other countries are doing such a thing, right? So yeah, we are in the states. We have what we call the PPP program, which is Paycheck yeah. Protection, and so okay. a lot of people, are, you know, have been able to keep their employees. Uh, also, small businesses in the U.S. could apply for a loan from the Perfect. business yeah. administration. So yeah, so totally get it. And there, there were some uh, questions about nonprofits in the states being able to get that sort of support, but it turns out they are okay. able to do it. Yes. Um, it's, it's just a low, there's a lot of questions. Um, I know a lot of people have questions about it, but speaking of questions, I wanted to follow yeah. up on uh, something you mentioned earlier. You've repositioned the perception of your member's career mm -hmm. in Correct. the public eye. and. I love that because I also used to be an administrative assistant. So mm -hmm. I'm with you on that, it, it could be a great and wonderful career. So did you see your member numbers go up when you repositioned that perception? Yeah, so we've actually started the series um, when we when we did our webinar in June on, we had a, a trifecta, so three Canadian women speakers who had talked about um, different uh, administrative traits and it was a Q&A, it was actually fabulous, a great session. Um, and one of the things that came up is, you know, we, we talk about how the career, like admins are thought of it's just a job, right? And, and, and or a stepping stone to something else, you know, but we want to make sure that people understand that, you know, we, like I myself, have chosen this as my career. This is my you know, this is what I see myself as, and I think the mindset has to change um, from a like from an organization level, and we can only really do that um, through partnerships with other organizations to make that known. So that's one of the things with IAAP and with the World Alli uh, Administrator Alliance. Um, you know, we're trying to increase that. I guess you can call it. You know, that no notice. Like, I don't know if it's the word notification or if it's, you know, you know, we want to show people that 
we are strategic business partners because at the end of the day, it's not just about getting coffee. It's not just about getting dry cleaning. It's not about just doing minutes, right? You know, we can save how many hours a day in an executive's time to do mm-hmm. things that, you know, that they could be thinking of in a, in a different sense, right? Um, mm-hmm. But it's also how I think part of that is the team, right? The self-esteem of an individual, being able to re- recognize and realize their worth. And I, and that's the biggest part of, you know, our the associations. We want to make sure that we are there to help you become the best you, right? Mm-hmm. And and that's, that's, that's important for everybody, right? Like, it, it's not just in bin career, but, and I think for the association, because we're an association focused on administrative professionals, we want them to ensure, to ensure them that they're not just a regular everyday admin. We are strategic business partners for our executives that we support or the organizations that we support and mm-hmm. we contribute a great deal. And I mean, you've been an admin assistant, as you said, mm-hmm. and I bet you anything, you know, when you left that role, there was a void that needed to be filled. Yes. Right. Well, there and, had to be- I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off, but that was <laughs> one of the nicest compliments I ever got when I left one assistant job at an organization to go to another department the person I'd been working for told HR, I want another Cecilia. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay. <laughs> so I had to inter- interview again at the HR department so they could find another me. And I'm like, <laughs> that. but anyway, no, so I'm, yeah, so I agree yeah. because, you know, I had created that, that great working relationship with that person, mm-hmm. but I hate to say it, we are actually not just out of time, but over time. But this oh, is, dear. <laughs> this is so wonderful having you here, Catherine, and your enthusiasm for representing your members is just so wonderful. And they're yes. very lucky to have you there. Thank so, you very much. And, and good luck, continued good luck. And we will definitely have you back. We'd love to hear how some other things are working out for you with all these great plans. You've basically done all the things that we advise people to do. <laughs> review, revise, move forward. And so just very quickly, Agnes, do you have any closing thoughts on this topic? You know, I kind of echo what you said. I think it's it's just amazing how uh, an admin assistant within the role within the organization are one of the bedrocks of the organization because without them, mostly some of the uh, leaders cannot function, uh, both on a strategic level and on a practical level. So I do echo a lot of those thoughts. And, and again, kudos to all you guys are doing uh, within the association that you represent. So Catherine, if our community wants to reach out to you to kind of share with you or ask more questions on what you do and how they can benchmark um, best practices, how, is, how, how can they reach you? What's the best uh, number or email or contact uh, to reach you? Yeah, you can reach me at um, ap.national.president at canadianadmin.ca. You can also go to our website, and there's um, an in, if you, there's a general inbox, it'll come to me anyways. Um, well, it's monitored by, by, by somebody else, but if it's a question for Catherine, they'll just forward it over to myself as well. We are also active on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn groups. Um, and we just started our first YouTube channel. So um, we are, <laughs> yeah, it's really exciting. So um, thank you guys so much for inviting me to come out today and talk about the association. And um, I'm really, I'm really excited to see what the next, what the future holds for us. So, well, so are we. So like I said, we definitely want to have you back uh, and see how things are unfolding. Uh, you, your approach at your organization is inspiring. Yes. So, Thank you. Congratulations and continued good luck. We really have to go rogue for now, <laughs> but it's been so wonderful having Catherine here talking about uh, everything. So we will be back with another episode next week. Thanks again to Catherine Ballancourt for sharing uh, their plans and activities and service to their members. So uh, on behalf of Rogue Tulips, thanks for joining us. You can learn more about Rogue Tulips and how we can help you be more like Catherine. Uh, you can visit roguetulips.com <laughs> and uh, we'll see you again on another episode. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.